have kids. I'm 29 years old. <laughs> what else should I say? <laughs> so, really, go stuck with your point here. Yeah. Uh -huh. You went to university yeah. to study fitness. That's a whole other thing. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Prior to university, mm -hmm. I didn't even know anything about fitness. You know, I wanted to go to university, honestly, like to have fun. Mm -hmm. I, my, you know, my parents wanted me to do law, medicine, yeah. all those things. But I deliberately chose something that has recreation. I'd never even heard of it before because I wanted to have fun in university. And when I initially actually wanted to do hospitality, that was my first choice. So when they called me for this, um, I wanted to change it back to hospitality because you're given that opportunity when you're called. And so, but then the chairman of this course told me that we'll be going out, we'll do camps, we'll do games, we'll do swimming and fitness. And that's what kept me there because I'm like, I've never done this before. And it sounds like it's going to be fun. So that's how I ended up in that course. Yeah. Wakati, some of us were like, me, I want to be. I think I always wanted to be. Not I think I always wanted to be a journalist all my life. Yeah. So then there's Beth, hey, who took up, who took up um, a career out of something as simple as that. How has it been? It's been amazing. It's been amazing. You know, like um, I fell in love with fitness in second year in university. When I realized that it's actually a solution to so many things. You know, I loved being on the preventative cause of things rather than the, you know, like, for example, I learned about how people acquire lifestyle diseases and all those things mm -hmm. and how people can prevent that by living a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, so that's what made me fall in love with it. I, I can help people not even get to the point of going to the doctor and getting prescriptions and mm -hmm. all those things. And so it's been amazing. It's been beautiful. I have, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I've never regretted choosing this path. It's been very fulfilling. How, how does your day look like, like from morning? How does your day look like? Well, it depends because fitness is, you can either work in a gym, it's very all-rounded. You can either work in a gym, you can either do just classes, you can do personal training. So I major mostly on personal training every day looks different because of different client timings. At the moment also right now, I'm working in a gym in Westlands called Hit Zone. Um, it's actually a new fitness concept. You guys can check it out. <laughs> it's in Westlands, Nine West, first floor. And uh, I conduct classes there as well. So every day looks different. <laughs> so you have, yeah. um, you have clients that come purposely into a memo to amkiasubuya kuje class. Yeah. Who keep fit. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> hey. Yeah. I think you uh, you had asked me a question yeah. that I'd probably want to answer on air. Yeah. Um you had asked me if I'm if I've ever tried working out. Yeah. I there's this there's this this um, I'm sharing because it brings me to the next thing I want to ask you. Uh how do you handle students like me who who sign up for classes and then commitment level is yeah is bad is one thing yeah <laughs> i usually tell people that you struggle with commitment because number one a uh, lack of the right motive of doing this because when you get into a fitness journey most people may come in just like i want to lose weight that's the most common one um i want to you know fit better into my clothes i want to build muscle whatever um, those are amazing goals, but then the motive also matters the most. And that's what I major on right now. Because now, uh, what will fuel your commitment is your motivation to do this. Because now that's also another big thing, lack of motivation. Um, because lack of motivation leads to lack of consistency as well. So a deeper motive would look like I'm working out, especially as a child of God, I'm working out to be a better steward of my health. I'm working out so that God because this, is a, this body belongs to Christ, belongs to God. Jesus died for this body, and I am required to be a faithful steward over it, and it is my way of thanksgiving to him when I'm taking care of my body, when I'm stewarding my health. Another thing is also, you have people that you love in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you may not have kids yet, but you have loved ones, and you wouldn't want them to, you know, go under 
to go through taking you to hospital or paying hospital bills mm -hmm. because of something that you would have had control over you know uh, you have kids you don't to play with them for an older you know even when you get older right you'd like to run around you don't want to be walking on you know with a walking mm. stick as you grow older you want to grow older stronger mm. and how you grow older is so dependent on how you take care of yourself now when most people feel like they're young i'm okay i don't need to do all these things because i'm moving well but then you see how you age is dependent mm. on how you take care of yourself now it's like you're sowing the seeds of of you know of your older self yeah <laughs> really? so the motive really matters that's what keeps you committed I think may had the <laughs> now that you're talking, I think may had the wrong motives. Mimi, what was my motive of working out? Because that's a good point you've raised, uh, the motive of working out. I think my motive of working out was that I wanted to do this flat tummy and to do this, um, uh, yeah. of course, I'm a woman and you're a woman. Yeah. This to do shape, so you keep squatting, keep squatting, and you keep like Exactly, yeah. Do those things work? Let me just ask for, for the benefit of my curiosity. Yeah. In terms of like getting those goals or? Yeah. yeah like achieving sure. those hips, yeah. Sidri could flatten your tummy, Sidri could have. Yes. Like, if there's one thing I hate, even with my, even with my <laughs> bad fitness habit, yeah. is this kanyama kana hanging mm. Like, you know, especially when you age and you become a mama, there's a way that this nyama you eat. Yeah. Looks, <laughs> for yeah. me, looks bad. Yeah, so for sure they do. For sure, like um, workout programs are constructed, especially when it comes to personal training, um, according to your goal. It's literally an exercise prescription, you know. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's your goal, that's why, like, I'm talking about motives, um, but motives, they fuel your goals. Goals are still very important. Mm -hmm. It's okay to want good aesthetics. Mm -hmm. It's okay to want to look good. It's okay to want to look tighter. I mean, it's it's very okay and it's good to have those goals you know so those goals they are attained by a very specific programming so the exercises that you may not need to do you know with certain goals as well mm. so yeah it does work people do get results um but then results are also gotten by consistency because if you're in and out you're working out once in a week and then you work out again three weeks later the goals are not going to come. So yeah. that's why, again, <laughs> that's why, again, the motives are very key. So that as much as you have these goals, you're not just working out. Because what I've seen also is that people may work out to just attain these mm. goals and that's it. But you see, like, it should be a lifestyle. It should yeah. go beyond the goals because, like, fitness is not just, it's not just for aesthetics. Aesthetics is the bonus, actually, is what I would say, you know, because as you're consistent, you'll just start to see, wow, I'm changing, like my body's becoming tighter. And you even, when you have the right motive, you even stop thinking about it, you even stop thinking about the number on the scale, because you're like, it's for a bigger purpose than just the number on the scale. But then as you go along, people start to tell you, wow, you look so much better, like you look really good these days or mm -hmm. whatever, because you've stuck to it because of the motive that was fueling you. Yeah, that, that, that you've mentioned that, and then it has brought me to the concept of um, dieting. How important is dieting in terms of, in especially dieting and nutrition, in terms of uh, keeping fit? Very important. Um, I don't like using the word dieting because uh, many times a diet is how it has also been communicated is very restrictive in terms of. You know, you can't have this and this and this. Like, it it basically strips you of everything all at once. Oui. You you're, know what I mean? You're talking about me. Yeah. So, like, um, I don't advocate for diets because mm. many times people fall back from from a diet experience. And, like, let's say it's, like, because diets are also very short-lived most of the time. The prescribed diets are, like, okay, do this for, like, one month, just you know, remove everything all at once for yeah. one month and you'll be good. And after that one month, for sure, you, you may have lost weight, you may have, you know, seen some changes. But then after that one month, subconsciously, your mind was missing all these other things that you couldn't take. And subconsciously, your mind is just waiting for that one month to end. And most times people go back, even add more weight than they did yeah. before the diet. So I don't like prescribing diets. So what I normally do 
even in the program that I run called Fit for Purpose, is we let go of things one thing at a time. If you struggle with sugar, you know, you can challenge yourself to stop taking sugar for like two weeks. See how it goes, you know, see how your body um, can actually do without it. And most of the time, what I've seen even in my program is when people um, take up, I call them healthy lifestyle habits, you know, because you don't want it to be short lived. You want it to be a, a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. A diet is not a healthy lifestyle. It's just short lived. Then, you know, you go back into this cycle, mm -hmm. you add more weight, you go back into another diet, leave it, add more weight. Mm -hmm. So it's a very unhealthy cycle I've seen throughout my years. So if you just implement one healthy lifestyle at a time, you just give yourself a duration of like one week, no sugar. The next week, I may cut out wheat. That's also another big, you know, because now you're trying to train your body to bring it under subjection. The Bible says that, that your body, you should bring it under subjection, that your body is not supposed to dictate, oh, I'm craving this, so now you, you have it, you know. But when you're doing this, you're training it. Even though you're craving it, you don't need to have it. So... Nutrition is very important because your internal organs, um, how they age is dependent on what you're putting in it. Because food, God created food to be fuel. It's not just supposed to gratify our taste buds. Mm -hmm. They're actually, food is actually meant to fuel our bodies as we do our daily activities. So when we take in the wrong food, when you take in mm -hmm. junk food, then you're fueling the body wrongly. And over time, your inner organs, they begin to deteriorate. And you begin to see this as you grow older. So you start to develop funny diseases because your organs have not been getting the, nut the nutrients that they need to age properly or even to function properly. Yeah, so nutrition is good, not just because someone has goals, but because on the long run, you know, it's meant to be a lifestyle. Yeah. How long have you been a fitness coach? I've been a fitness coach since my... Um, Third year in uni, which was 20, what, 15? Yeah, because that's the first time like I got to work in a gym. That's the first time I got to do my internship in a gym in Westlands. Then from there, yeah, till now. <laughs> um, there's someone who probably thinks, who probably um, sits down and they imagine that fitness is not, is not, is not, very serious. Have you met those people? Oh, of course, yeah, every day. <laughs> How do you handle it? Well, I tell them, I tell them about it, you know, like many times why people would feel that fitness is not as important is because we are not as aware of how important our bodies are. People get aware of how important your body is when you get an injury or when you fall sick and all of a sudden you can't do things that you would normally do when you're moving well. You know, so I usually say need to, you need to look at your body as a gift because it is, you know, it's a gift that God has given us to walk through this earth with, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't operate outside your body. No matter what you do, you're stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So how you take care of it is so key. It is directly related to the quality of your life because you know, like fitness has so many benefits, increasing, uh, I mean, including boosting your immunity. So falling sick is not, you know, is not as often. And even when you do, you recover much faster than someone who does not work out because your immunity is much stronger. So I try and tell them to be more aware, to be more aware of the fact that your body is a gift. It's a gift that God has given you. And without it, if, it, if you're not taking care of it, you're the one who's going to you know, suffer for that. Because when you're sick or when you're hurt, you can no longer move the way you want to move, can no longer enjoy your loved ones mm -hmm. the way you'd want to. Yeah, so I just really, I just encourage them <laughs> with that. Wow, that, 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 that has brought me to this aspect of you being a a female trainer. Yeah. How do you handle um, how do you handle the packs of being a female trainer in terms of a lot of people ha are used to seeing male um, yeah. male instructors or male coaches, yeah. but then there's now this aspect of you being a female coach. Mm. It's a good question. Um, because when I got you know, when I first entered into the fitness industry, it's true, like, it's very male-dominated. Um, although right now, there are very many fitness, 
female fitness trainers coming uh, on board. So how I handled it, um, just by doing my best, basically. <laughs> yeah, um, because you know the narrative is changing. Um, there are more fitness coaches being seen now in a gym, like right now if you go to a typical gym, you'll probably see more male trainers, but then most gyms now you wouldn't miss at least two, you know, now they've been increasing, but yeah, you wouldn't miss a female coach. So it's been interesting that it's had challenge, challenges of its own, but it also has advantages of its own because we also have clients who, like especially women, who only want to work with a female trainer because they just feel safer that way. So yeah, it has its perks. It has its perks, like, and that's one of them. Like, that's one of the advantages. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. So how many clients do you have a day? How many people do you handle a day? Deep, like... Days Averagely? Uh, like right now, I have this program that I'm running that has how many participants? Right now it has like, is it 19 people? And then now we have the group fitness classes in Westlands, which classes vary. It's, it's a startup, so like classes are really varying from like 5 to 10 maybe. Then personal training about right now about three personal training. So but mostly I do like online training. So like oh no actually five actually because that two others that I've taken on. So how many is that? Because <laughs> I work with all these people mm -hmm. on a weekly basis in different aspects, in different scopes. Like for the program, for example, that's a whole different thing. For, th for the hit zone thing, that's a whole different thing. And for my personal training, that's a whole different thing. Where? So you might, <coughs> you might realize that in a day you have like five. Yeah, you would say that. Like that I interact with mm -hmm. on a daily basis, maybe r roughly. So... Let me just understand something. These people, you do basically physical workout or you also do theoretical something? Yeah, I love to, well, of course, it's majorly physical because mm -hmm. that's what they've prescribed for. But even as I take them through the physical, I definitely talk about the theoretical because we also have clients who ask you questions, you know, like, um, and it's good to ask those questions. <laughs> like, why am I doing this? Uh, what? type of foods should I avoid and all those things. So yeah, I definitely have to educate them and tell them, okay, this is why you're doing this. And again, it also fuels the motivation because many will ask you those questions because they also want that drive, you know. So the theory part is very important as much as the physical is what people come for. Yeah, so yeah. Ooh, nice, nice. Wow, but still, hmm? I think it's because you're doing something you love. Yeah. <laughs> so it's because me, I'm thinking if I was <laughs> helping like five people work out in one day. <laughs> but that's, a, that's, that's on a light note. Talk yeah. about Fit for Purpose. Yeah. Fit for Purpose is a program that basically um, targets the body of Christ and it helps children of God to become more aware of the fact that their bodies do not belong to themselves. Mm -hmm. Our bodies belong to God. And because of that, we are called to be faithful stewards of them, to take care of them, because we'll be accountable for them. Um, when Jesus comes, he's going to, you know, like we'll be accountable for everything he's put in our hands, whether it's finances, whether it's people, um, whether it's our bodies. So Fit for Purpose equips the body of Christ to be literally fit for purpose to literally take care of the body that God is using on this mm -hmm. earth for the purpose that they have been called into because we are going to walk our entire life um, with these bodies whether you're being called to missions whether you're being called to arts to music whatever mm -hmm. it is you cannot do it outside of your body mm -hmm. so fit for purpose the aim is to help believers children of God to take care of their bodies, to steward their health as they've been called to do. You know, um, that John 2 says that, uh, beloved, um, 
I, I wish above mm -hmm. all that you may prosper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in your health, just mm -hmm. as your soul prospers. Yes. And so that means, like, God desires that we are healthy. So fit for purpose helps to fulfill God's desire also in your life because it, he desires that we're healthy. God, you know, Jesus would not have taken the stripes on our back for our healing and our divine health if health was not important to him. You know, healing is such a big thing in for God <laughs> because <coughs> he wants us to. And so when we are taking care of our body, we're actually partnering with him, you know, to steward that health that he already paid for on that cross. So, but then when we are not taking care of our bodies, when we are just taking in whatever we need, whatever we want to eat, all the sweets, all the junk, it's like we are, you know, we are not aware of the grace that God has mm -hmm. given us, you know, in terms of dif divine health. It's like we are trashing, I like to say it's like we're trashing that grace, like we're saying whatever, you paid for it, but <laughs> but yeah. my body is mine. So even when you're taking care of our body, you're actually giving it back to God, you know, as a living sacrifice, because you're like, it belongs to you, I'm giving it back to mm. you. You dictate how I eat, you dictate how I move. So it's a form of giving it back to him, you know, yeah, because it belongs to him. Amazing, amazing. Are non-believers welcome to the program? Yes. Of course, yeah. It targets, it does target believers, but they're welcome and they will get saved in the process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So how long does the program take? The program takes three months, mm -hmm. only three months, yeah. So every Saturday we have a physical class session. During the week, my... Uh, clients, students, <laughs> my people, they have their workouts that they do during the week. We have a community group on Telegram where we post um, our workouts for the week. So that's how we keep accountable. Accountability, I'd like to, to just say for a minute, is really, really important in a fitness journey because that's also another thing that fuels consistency. When you're accountable to someone, and that's why it's important to have a coach, whether it's personal training, whether you're doing group classes, but it's very important to have a coach or someone that you're with in the journey. Because now this group is majorly for accountability, that you're not walking alone and that there are people who are waiting to see if you worked out that day. There are people waiting to see how you're progressing in this program. So that has really kept people coming um, and kept people consistent. Uh, consistent yeah in working out because of the accountability aspect of the program as well um, yeah so it runs Mondays we have a different we have a workout constantly for Mondays every Friday there's a Friday challenge during the week there's something they're doing and Saturdays yeah so three months and yeah and we're good Ooh. maybe I'll now I'll now get motivated to join hmm. Not maybe. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I might actually... Mm, yeah, I'm getting convinced. <laughs> the Lord is speaking to you. He yeah. should. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you. How, how did your parents take it when you yeah. said you wanted to do fitness training? Well, I am privileged that I've had really supportive parents. Um, they had their questions, of course, because they had never heard about it also um like i mentioned earlier my my dad especially wanted me to do law in <laughs> in moika barak university and uh yeah but when i really when they saw my passion for it they've just really really been supportive like since since i got into uni even when i was called for the course we went for them I mean, we went with them for the meeting where they told us about what the course is about. And they were for it. They were like, if, if you love it, then it's okay. So they, they really supported me until today. Yeah, I'm sure they're watching even right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good parents. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Uh, you've, you've, you've mentioned the area of, um, I wanted to, there's something I wanted to ask you. Why is it disappearing? Why? When it comes out, when it comes out, when it comes, I'll tell you about it. Okay. But now the aspect of family is very important. Do you do you have like um, policy for your clients that says um, probably their family approval or something? You know the way we go to um, to the hospital yeah. and they say you need your family to approve something. So do you have a policy? Probably what are the, some of the mm -hmm. policies you work with? 
I don't your have clients? That. I don't have the, uh, such policies because many of the clients that we get, I mean, or that I get are adults, you know, or mm. young adults. So most of them are like, this is <laughs> like, this is my decision. I want to be fit. I want to be healthy. Yeah. So maybe the only policy that I, I would have is maybe if you've had a medical um, history, mm. you know, because there's some workouts, I would, I would require you to go to a doctor if you've had a medical issue maybe for some time so that you're cleared out for working out. That's very important in fitness. Mm -hmm. like, because I've worked with people with very many different conditions and um, especially being in the, in the personal training aspect of it. And it's very important as a coach, as a fitness coach, to make sure that your clients don't have any underlying medical issues that may you know, compromise the fitness journey or that also may just put them in, in danger so that you just know what exercises they should do or not do. And also that applies to injuries as well, like past injuries or, you know, just stuff like that because now there are movements that you will, would need to do. So, yeah. So one of my very important policies is that, like, um, if I know you've had an issue before, you may be, I don't know, there are just many, <laughs> many issues these days. Um, whatever it is, if it's very important, like let's say arthritis or something, you know, because I've worked with people who have arthritis, um, diabetes, or a, a recent surgery, things like that, you need clearance to begin your workout. So yeah, clearance, that's a policy that I have, yeah. Probably as you talk about policies that um, your clients need to have, what are some of the other requirements that you look out for? Mm, like from the client? Yes. In terms of like um, now, you see the way you've said um, health is very important, like medical um, report from a doctor is very important. So yeah. if I was to come sign up for um, if I yeah. was to come sign up for classes, mm -hmm. what are some of the things you'll require of me? I would just require you to like besides that, besides having because most of the people right now that I'm working with, I. I know about them already. Mm -hmm. So like if it's a totally new person, like number one, there's that, yeah, I would tell you, um, there's normally a form that I give people. Uh, it's called a fitness assessment form. So they usually mm -hmm. fill that form and that form has all those details. It has like your age, what, what work you're doing, um, how long you've worked there, how sedentary is that work. Um, well, every, all those medical issues are listed there. So you take mm -hmm. if there's any. Um, so I require of that normally, I require for someone to fill an assessment form. And then, then now we'll do like, if it's personal training, we'll do like a physical fitness assessment now to gauge where you're at, your beginning level, how many push-ups can you do, if you can do any, like that just helps us to form a starting point. So I would require of the client to fill that form. I would require the client to definitely have comfortable <laughs> clothes, you know, and shoes. <laughs> no. <laughs> so proper shoes. Proper shoes are important, actually, because they really, they cushion your knees from impact, you know, when you're working out and all. Um, I would require... Let me just ask. Water. <laughs> um, yeah. What does proper shoes mean? Because proper shoes is relative. That's For true. me... Proper shoes might be doll shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you, yeah. proper shoes might mean sport shoes. Sport shoes. You know, but then yeah. there's someone who is wondering, is it Raboni Konazo or Sineza Enda Tunazo? You know? Yeah. I, I get that a lot, actually. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, proper shoes are like these sport shoes. And uh, if you go to buy sport shoes, that some of them are actually even written inside foam, F O A F O. A um, memory foam sports shoes because they have really good cushioning um, at the at the where your heel is. Mm. So those are proper shoes for working out. Sports shoes, sports shoes, yeah. Mescare ni sport shoes. Sport shoes. Nisi enda pona doll shoes alafu nasa kwa me fitness trainer. Sasa sizi shoes zinaweza. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then you know sports shoes are also built to to have grip, more grip on the floor. So you're not constantly sliding and whatever mm. when you're doing the movements yeah uh, one of those things uh people wear yeah what, what are they called i don't know 
and on the knees. Uh, okay, those are not really necessary. For the knees, there are knee wraps or knee bands that normally help people if they've had former knee issues or they have, uh, like, the, the knee joint is prone to get hurt easily or it's not as stable. So what knee wraps or the knee uh, bands help in is they just stabilize the joint. Uh, but many people who use them often are people who lift heavy, like heavy weights, because heavy weights can, you know, they can put a lot of load on your knees. So when you wear them, they just cushion the knees. But it's not, it's not important, like they're mm -hmm. not a major requirement. Yeah. So we just come with our sport shoes, um, pants, and a vest, and we're good to go. Yeah, comfortable clothes, workout clothes. <laughs> Yeah, and water, <laughs> water is important. So. What? Yeah. That part here, water, they think I have a problem with it. What? With drinking water? I also have, a <laughs> I also have a, a problem with drinking water. I like a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a hard one. It's a hard one. But yeah, yeah. Mm. What are some of the challenges we've experienced as, as a fitness coach? Um, in general, as a female, <laughs> Let me in general. In general. Well, some challenges are, you know, as a fitness coach, uh, there's a lot of trust involved. People are literally putting their bodies in your hands, quote unquote. <laughs> so uh, there's the journey where you get to develop trust, especially when it, when it comes to personal training. Um, and that's, you know, that takes time sometimes. And that's, that's one of the challenges. Another challenge could be when I just joined in the fitness industry is um, before it was not as edu, as you know, like it was not as, what can I say? Like, like people would just become fitness coaches because, you know, I'm strong. Mm -hmm. I can lift this weight so I can train you because <laughs> I have the muscle, I've gotten the results. So, so the education part of it was not as emphasized as today mm -hmm. so when I joined in. And so many times I would be quote unquote like a threat, you know, in a gym like I'm working in. So like if I would, if I would really concentrate on clients, then it would be, hey, you're trying to steal our clients or something. Mm. Yeah, although that has really diminished these days, thank God. Um, another one would be a challenge. Yeah, I think that's it. Like just building your clientele, um, the stereotype maybe in the gym and all those things. Because now these days, I, I love to look at it on a very positive scale because I love doing it. And also like there's so many changes that have happened in the fitness industry for the better, especially for female coaches, female instructors and trainers. Yeah. yeah. Probably someone is seated somewhere and wondering how affordable is it to do fitness? Oh man, like you can even work out from the comfort of your home. You know, as long as wherever you are with your body, you can work out. It does not have to be expensive. If you can't afford a fitness coach, I mean like a personal trainer, because yes, personal training, it's pricey, you know. Um, but then again, health is wealth, you know. It's mm -hmm. better to spend your money in becoming, in staying, becoming, staying, remaining healthy, moving better than in the long run spending your money with doctor's prescriptions and hospital mm. appointments because we didn't take care of our body, you know. So I, I would say it's very affordable. It's affordable for anyone. If you may not still have the money maybe to maybe subscribe for a gym or a personal trainer, then there's so many other options. I'm telling you, these days, like you can get a program that you can do at home. There are trainers, coaches who are willing to train you from the comfort of your home, who are willing to just prescribe exercises for you and just maybe have a talk with you uh, once in two weeks or once in a while, once, not once in a while, once in a week or once in two weeks. There's so many different packages. So you don't, like finances should never be an excuse for not for not um, working out at all. There's so many options. And that's why I created this program as well, Fit for yeah. Purpose, because 
it creates um, an avenue, you know, for many, many people. And the price is also super subsidized. <laughs> so it's worth the investment, honestly. Like you're investing in your health. You're investing not just for you individually, for even the people that you love. Like your health affects everyone around you. And it affects also your purpose that God has for you. So yeah, it's, it's very affordable. Yeah, depending on what you want to, depending on what you want to prescribe for. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So I don't know if you, you, you've introduced the aspect of the simple exercises we can do at home. So yes. I don't know if you want to demonstrate some of those. Yeah. Sure. Today I am ready. <laughs> I'm excited. We can. Yeah. We can. We, we can, can stand up. Yes. Okay. We can cool. All right. So. You've told me, we were talking before, and you said that you once worked out. <laughs> <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> yes, <Right? laughs> once, upon, once upon a time. Once upon a time. Awesome. Once upon a time. Okay, so we'll start with the, the most basic uh -huh. exercises in, in, in fitness. <laughs> and one of them is the squat. The beautiful thing with a squat is that we actually do this on, a, on every day. When you're picking up things, you know, people pick up things the wrong way. Uh -huh. One of the reasons actually people have back pains, knee pains, is because we are engaging our joints, especially mm -hmm. our lower back and our knee joints, because you've not trained your body to do this movement the way they should do, mm -hmm. uh, the way it should. You've not trained your muscles to be engaged. So mm -hmm. for example, when you're picking up things from the ground, mm -hmm. you should pick them up with your legs and not your back, like that. So like, we do this, that's yeah. what a typical Kajan will do. Yes, Let me typical, do this here. Yeah. So this is what I'll do. <laughs> Exactly. You see, imagine if that thing is heavy, how much strain you've put on your lower back. So okay. many people come to me that like, I have lower back pains. Of course, there are many, many other reasons for lower back pains, mm -hmm. including sitting for the whole day. Because now what squats do also, they strengthen your bum muscles or mm -hmm. scientifically your glute muscles, which is mm -hmm. basically your bum bum. Your mm -hmm. bum muscles are very key because they cushion your lower back mm -hmm. when you're climbing stairs, lifting things, um, doing all those things. So. Squatting, you just take your feet slightly wider than shoulder width, slightly wider than shoulder width. Awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then with your chest up, let me turn this side so you can see me. With your chest up, you're just going to go down like that. So when you're going down, your weight is on your heel and not on your toes. So you're not going forward, you're going back. So it's as though you're sitting on the toilet. So you see what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's something you do every day because you sit on the loo every day, yeah. you know, but then you'll just sit anyhow. But it's like there's something behind you and you want to sit on it and then you stand up. Let me see. Let me see you. <laughs> Let me see you. Okay. So, feet, so. shoulder width. Mm -hmm. uh, there. Yes. Okay. With your chest up, push your hips back, weight on your heels, facing forward, and then you just go down. End up one more time. Let's go. Awesome. Now you can take it just slightly lower. <laughs> yes. Hey. You're doing well. <laughs> you're doing well. Awesome. And by the way, if you're learning to squat, you can even use uh, whatever that you can have, like a chair or a bench behind you. So, for example, if mm -hmm. I have this chair, if you're learning to squat the proper way, you just go behind until your bum touches and then back because it oh. helps you to shift your hips behind then you touch and stand, and stand up. up yeah so even if you're home and you're watching and you want to do a proper squat that's a weight you can begin rather than starting here as you get the form properly yeah. so, so let's do 10 of those 10 yes hey jesus <laughs> let's try okay i'm standing we can do it together okay. guys I'm who are watching yeah we yeah. so i have some misery yeah you're okay. good Good, that's one, very good. That's two, you're doing well, keeping the chest up. That's three, good job. That's four, come on, six last ones. You can do it. <laughs> Jesus, it's not easy. <laughs> you can do it. All right, let's go, six more. Good. Let's go, keeping the form. Good job, four last ones. Good job. Very good. Two last ones. One last one, Grace. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> I have realized we do the wrong things. Yeah. Because we will just 
Yes. And I feel I couldn't get to you if I did. Yeah. You know, I'll just be like, ah, it's proper okay. form, yeah. Proper form is so important because now you're engaging the muscles. So you're already breathing. <laughs> I'm very unfit. So, so that's one major leg workout. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe we can do an upper body workout, right? Can we use this chair? I think yeah. we can. So on this, uh, if you have a chair at home, you can just be on that chair. Uh, okay, from a seated position, then get off. Then now you just take yourself down and pull yourself up. That works on your arms. So you remember how you had talked about the flabby yeah. thingy? Yeah, this is really good for that. <laughs> With so, strong arms with a lean arm yeah so now you just move forward off the chair then bend your elbow push yourself up with the elbow so what you don't want to do you don't want to push yourself with your legs focus only on your hands and then push yourself up give me 10 that's two is it Good normal that so my shoulders feel they will feel because you see in that position already like your shoulders have been stretched out Good. guys that's Oh, what number is that? I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's say this is five. Oof. Good job. Now, I want you, your feet just forward so that your knees are at 90 degrees. That's better. Good. Oof. All right, let's go. Six. Good. Seven. Good. Eight. Are you feeling it here? Oof. Good. Two more. Nine. Good. So this should be working. One last one. And last one, Grace. That's oh, one. Jesus. Good job. So that's an upper body. <laughs> that's a lower body and an upper body workout that you can do. Can you try some abs now? Yeah. Now, yes. We abs. Can. You know, people think it's only sit-ups that work out the abs, but I'd like to change that narrative because um, the, the best ab workouts are actually mainly play, um, plank workouts. You know, there are very many different types of plank workouts. So we can try that, Grace. So mm -hmm. a plank looks like this. Just plank like this. Awesome. Jesus. So bring the hips up. <laughs> That's good. So you see that? You're already feeling the tension here? Yes. Right? Exactly. So a plank already really engages your... your <laughs> and also, <laughs> you're doing well, Grace. <laughs> Yeah, so you see, so welcome so much to my program. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> yeah, see. Okay, let's try that <laughs> once again. All right, let's try it. Let's try it. Good. So when you're planking, make sure your shoulder, elbow, and wrist are in line. So I want you, your wrist to just come underneath your shoulders. Here? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, just slightly forward. Slightly forward. Not too, yeah. Okay, bring it up. Yeah, that's much better. Good. So even as you're holding that, you're already feeling the tension, right? Awesome. So that's good, okay? That's really good. That's good. Awesome. Now, I'd like you to try something. So that's already another one. So a plank can even be your finisher, okay? Um, it engages everything. Like, it's, when you have a strong core, you your movements are much stronger even on a daily basis you have better balance mm -hmm. you have better you just maneuver way better and your core comprises of your abs even your legs and just basically like okay not not all not your full legs but mostly like the front part mm -hmm. and even your back as well so when you're doing a plank you're engaging your back you're engaging your chest you're engaging your shoulders you're engaging your abs so it's a compound movement so when you mm -hmm. strengthen your body in a compound way then it gets stronger all around it because your body works as a unit so it's good to mm -hmm. also do exercises that work with it that way like engaging many muscles at the same time okay so grace mm -hmm. we're going to do one last one one of okay. my favorites it's called a burpee uh-huh yeah have you heard of it before no, no, no. okay you're going to modify it so from the plank uh-huh so you see you're here uh-huh so now you'll just walk forward like that then small jump and then again you come down walk to a plank like that walk forward and then up just that way. can you try Let's try. Let's try. <laughs> you okay. can do it. Okay. Can Let's do see. It. Is that okay? Okay. okay. This one you'll just give me okay. five good ones. <coughs> so All right. I am okay. All right. From there. <coughs> I, uh, walk one foot forward. One foot forward. 
<laughs> can you try? It? Although you can modify this even further. Very good, very good. Good. And then you jump up. So if you if you can't start with a bappy from the floor, you can actually modify it still uh -huh. on the chair. So you see how we have this chair? Uh-huh. You can do an elevated bappy like this. So it's like you're planking on the chair mm -hmm. and then you step forward, step forward, jump. And then again, same thing. Like that. That one your chair. Here in a weza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay. Where yeah. am I? Yes, that's good. Then now you step forward. Now I just want just go back into the plank. Take your hips down. Exactly. Now from there. All right. Does everything in fitness have to be straining? <laughs> totally. Because now you see you're working your muscles. It wouldn't be working out if you are not working, you know? <laughs> All right. One foot forward. The other foot forward. I a jump up. Good. Give me a, another one. It's really good. All right. <laughs> one foot forward. One foot forward. Jump up. Good job. Give me three last ones. Good job. One foot forward. The other one. Jump up. Okay. Two last ones. One foot forward, the other one, and jump up. One last one. Come on, Grace, we got this. Oh, Perhaps. Jesus. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's the last one I cheated. No, that's when you, yeah, that, that one you played me to double but Yeah. Good job. How are you feeling? Is your heart rate up? Already. You feel like your muscles are working. Tomorrow I will wake up like this. No. <laughs> yeah, but Grace, this is just a few of the movements you can do at home. Yeah, so see. those are some of, some of the few things you can try at home. Yeah. Uh, I have been taught squats. We've Where? done squats. We've done, so what we were doing there are called tricep dips. Mm -hmm. And we've done um, the plank hold and we've done the burpees. <sighs> it's a whole full body workout. <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am breathing like, like a tractor. I can see man looking at me from somewhere in this studio. <laughs> man, you should have been here. Because uh, today you wore workouts. No, tomorrow she asked for a game. So I think this will be the perfect game to play with her tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. To <laughs> remind her. Yeah. If she remembers the lessons. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you so much You're for coming. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I, at least I have one thing now I can do. And then now it has motivated me to come back for more. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're welcome to the program also. <laughs> so long as they have... The, I think I think one of the things I fear about uh, probably getting into into a workout, to workout class is meeting people who already have the thing going mm. on, and then now you come and you're just beginning and you don't know where to begin from. I know. Yeah. That's why most people fear to join gyms because they're afraid they'll find yes. people who are yes. already so good at it. But the truth is that everyone has a beginning. Everyone has a starting point. This is your journey. However, uh, my program has really attracted many people who are just starting out. Most of the times I get fresh, like beginner, beginner people, and I've loved it. But no one should fear joining a gym or any program because you'll be a beginner. Everyone was once a beginner. You'll be surprised actually at how the people in gyms don't even think about it. Like even those who are really elite, you know, they're doing their own thing. They actually like would not even, there's no judgment because mm. they know the journey. In fact, when you see someone who's gotten there, they have a lot of respect from someone beginning, for someone beginning mm. because they're like, it's they been understand. a journey. Yeah, <laughs> they understand. So they will show me love, I will come. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. You're most welcome. Give us a party shot, tell us where we can find you on social media. Yeah, so on social media, you can find me at in Instagram. Beth Di Diana Beth Fitness <laughs> and also in Facebook yeah um, maybe my parting shot would just be uh, you are so precious your body is so precious and you need to see it that way you can't function outside of it you're stuck with it until death do you part <laughs> literally so I just pray for grace for you to be consistent to be motivated and committed to live a healthier lifestyle for the glory of God yeah Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for the workout lessons. Yeah, now I have a few I can boast at, about. At least you have yeah. four. Yeah. So if you do like 10 every day, that would I'll be, be good. good to go. Yes. Nice. <laughs>
That was Diana Beth, a fitness trainer. She's running a program called Fit for Purpose, where she just encourages everyone, both male and female, to be fit for purpose, to be fit and good stewards of their body. And of course, they may fundish for one or two. Yeah, and we are good to go. Kesho, I am here with Valentine. <laughs> To remind her the lessons, but don't touch that dial. She's coming back with more.